Are you keeping an eye? Are you looking for the mail carrier? <laughs> it's so funny. I'm not due for another hour. Hey, kia ora. Helen Brooks here coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic, sparkling, winning Wednesday. My gosh, what a morning it has been. Um, I did, um, after my morning training session, I did watch the, um, the inauguration live on a stream since I don't have TV connections. And um, they're like all the other ones that have gone before that I have that I have witnessed on TV before, it was, it's a very emotional experience. doesn't matter who winning, whether I voted for the person or not, I still get an emotional experience watching the inauguration. It is, um, I guess, just all the pomp, the circumstances, the ceremonies, um, and especially if the history making ones like today um, with the vice president being female being sworn in, um, African American, was it African American, Asian American, um, first female vice president ever. So, you know, it was kind of an emotional day. Um, in that regard. Um, but like I said, inaugurations, whether I vote for the person or not, um, I still enjoy watching them and I still get emotional over them. I get kind of choked up on them. Um, but you know, it was, it was a great, it's always a great thing to witness those because you never know, um, you know, years later when, when, when your great, great grandkids are reading the journals, reading your journals, if you keep a journal and they see your thoughts in there about inauguration day. Oh my gosh, my mother, my great, my second great grandmother was at inauguration, or she was watching it on TV, or you know whatever it was. It was getting their thoughts, and you've got your future generations have your thoughts and feelings about the inauguration, about who won, and that sort of thing. So it's something that um, your future generation will know a little bit more about learning about who you are by reading your journal. And uh, so I think it's always a great thing that if there's something historic happening, like an inauguration, to get somewhere where you can watch it, whether you're watching it live in person or whether you're watching it on TV or via live stream, be able to watch it and participate in it in some way so that you can write your thoughts and feelings down for future generations to, so they can learn more about you and more about what times were like during that particular historic event. Because um, you know me, I'm all about tying um, history up and making it personal, finding those personal connections to time, points and times in history and events in history. So this is one way that you can do it. Um, so yeah. So, um, so today is Winning Wednesday. Look at that. <laughs> it is also, um, so Winning Wednesday, we're going to talk about the um, eight successful habits for a winning mindset. And I read this great article in Lifehack. I love some of their articles. They have great articles. But I have pinned the article here that I've taken my notes from. And I'm going to run them through them really quickly because I do have a full day and um, kind of forgot to put the inauguration into my schedule go figure. <laughs> Did not put that in my calendar. So now it's thrown my schedule off. But then I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter if my schedule got thrown off today. What matters is that I got to participate in the historical moment watching the 46th president get sworn in, watching his vice president to get sworn in. And it was, you know, it was a day of celebration. Whether or not you vote for the person, it doesn't matter. It's a day of celebration for the country. Um, some people may not see it that way. I am not turning this into anything political. Just putting that out there. Um, so, um, but you know, then I thought about it and, uh, <laughs> and I had a, had a, um, did a workshop with a, with a, um, a friend of, a uh, friend, Maurice Domino, who has this workshop about um, how to put together your presentations and things. And uh, one of the things he always used to do is he would look at the clock that he had sitting on the side, on the side table there where he would have his notes and he would turn around and he would say and he'd look at the clock and it didn't matter if we were behind on schedule if we were ahead of schedule he always said oh my gosh we're exactly where we need to be at this point in time and you didn't and he had his little agenda there with all the little time thingies on it it didn't matter if we were running behind or if we were running ahead we were always exactly where we needed to be and I kind of thought about that and I thought you know if your day gets thrown out of a loop and you're running behind on time don't use time against you, use it with you by saying we're exactly where we need to be at this moment in time. And, um, you know, you're not running late, you're where you need to be at this moment in time. Although I will say this, if you are running late to a meeting, you do need to keep an eye on clocks on that. But um, at least call ahead to let the person know you're going to be late, please. I hate people who are late to meetings. I, it is a pet peeve of mine. I'm one of those people who are who always try to be at least 30 to 20 minutes early. If I'm getting on a Zoom call, I um, 
I'm sitting here 10 minutes to the hour or when 10 minutes before the appointment time, I'm ready to hit that button. And um, if I'm using somebody else's Zoom, like logging into somebody else's Zoom account, I usually wait, especially if it's a one-on-one -on -one because I don't know if they're meeting with somebody immediately before me. Um, and some people are using passwords and some people are using um, waiting rooms. And about a couple, in about five minutes too, I'll actually log in at that point. Um, but if I'm on a group session, then I'm usually on anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes beforehand. And um, even if I've, even if it comes up saying host has not yet started the meeting. And so you've got to wait for them to start the meeting. That's okay. That's okay. I am exactly where I need to be at that point in time. Because it means that I have now sat down. I have my note paper ready. I have my pen and paper ready. I'm not sitting there going, oh my gosh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this while the meeting is starting. But anyway, back to winning mindsets. <laughs> I have no idea how we got there. Oh yeah, because my day's my day has has scrambled a little bit because I forgot to put the inauguration into my calendar. Um, but that's okay. I'm exactly where I need to be at this moment in time. <laughs> so the eight habits this article talked about. The number one was affirmations. Affirmations are huge. I love my affirmations. Like I am confident. I am full of abundance. I am full of I am full of blessings. I um, you know the I am statements. There's so many greats. I am a Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. I am sneezing. <laughs> you know, those I am statements have such a powerful thing. Because when you talk the I am statements, you talk present tense. I am attracting. I am self-confident. So you're speaking in the present tense in that moment, not I have or I, um, I am going to. No, you speak present tense. Big thing on that. The second one was negative visualization, and I thought, negative visualization? I thought, what the heck? So I read this, and I thought, this is actually brilliant. It's almost like reverse psychology. So like you, um, for example, the example I've given you is about your car. You imagine that your car is stolen, and you there is no chance of recovering your car, and you don't have the resources to replace your car. And so now you have to imagine what are the, what are the feelings that you are now going through because you no longer have that mode of transportation that you've relied on for so long. And the, the thought process is that once you go through those feelings of what it's like to go without your car, that when you go and sit in your car, when you go actually go to a usual car, you have more of appreciation for the fact that you have a car. I thought, that's like reverse psychology, but I love it. It was brilliant. It was great. Um, choosing love. That's really easy. Everything comes from love. Uh, if you're in a positive frame of mind, everything, super fantastic and sparkling, comes from a place of love. Um, love being the strongest emotion that there is. Um, oh, yeah, there was that Cliff Richard song. Love is the strongest emotion. Something like that. Yeah, I have to go look up that one. <laughs> Number four was gratitude. And we always talk about gratitude on Thursdays. You know, always being grateful for what you have, always being grateful for where you are in your life. Being thankful for the experiences that you have had, that um, especially the ones where you have had to stretch and grow because of the circumstance you were in. Um, being solution orientated. Um, don't look at it a problem as a problem. Look at it as a chance to learn and grow. You know, um, look at different ways that you could um, that you could find a solution for a problem. Um, thinking flex flexibly. And I thought, well, that's a good one. And then I read the thing, and they used the example of, and I'm going to quote this because I I loved. I haven't actually seen this quote by. Um, Thomas Edison before, but I absolutely, I've heard variations of it. And so the quote here says, I have not failed 700 times. I have not failed once. I have succeeded in, in proving that those 700 ways will not work. When I have eliminated the ways that will not work, I will find the way that will work. And I thought, wow, because I've always heard the thing of, you know, how Thomas Edison, um, successfully found 10,000 ways that a light bulb did not work and so but that one there's a little more broader and because he looked at it from a different perspective he used his thinking flexibility to be able to look at something from a different perspective he hadn't failed at all he just proved ways that didn't work um, and he kept proving ways that didn't work until he found the one that did so I thought that was absolutely brilliant way to look at that curiosity always be curious I'm always curious people go um, uh, like people trying to say, oh, I found this wonderful new tool that will revolutionize your business and blah, 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 and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, okay. And so I will go off and 
I may ask them a few questions about it beforehand, or I might go off and research it on my own, then go back and ask them questions. Um, you know, and it could be some site time-saving app or soft, usually it's an app or software, um, where like I have the app Repurpose, and Repurpose will take my Facebook Lives, and whenever they've titled Helen's Great Adventures, it takes the Facebook Live, a few minutes after I've finished recording it, it downloads it and uploads it automatically to YouTube. Great tool to use. Um, whereas it had been, if it, and I use it twice a day, every single day, and it automatically puts my keywords in there and it automatically puts it into the playlist because I set up that workflow for it. So you start with the workflow, like I want my Facebook Lives, they have to have this in the title, um, and I want them moved to YouTube, and I want them put onto this playlist, and I want these keywords added. And I recently found out that I could have like an intro and exiting portion of the video that gets stuck at the beginning and the end of every video. And I'm like, that is so cool. But now I have to come up with an intro and an ending piece. So we're working on that. Um, but it will automatically plug it in there. Is that saving me time? Hell yeah. Because now I don't have to go into the end of the live, wait for it to download, then upload it into YouTube, um, and then put in all the keywords, put in the description. It does it it saves me so much time because for me to download it, upload it, put the keywords in, put all the descriptions in and everything else, you know, that's probably 20 to 30 minute process based on how fast the internet is at the time. And yes, some things you can copy and paste, which is fine, but still it's 20 to 30 minute process. You get this thing to do it. I don't even have to look. I just get on here, do my lives. It's done. I know I can go look an hour later and it will be sitting um, on my YouTube channel. So I'm sort of like, yes. Um, <laughs> so, um, always be curious. So if somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I found this great thing. It's awesome. Da, 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 da. Research it first to see if it is going to be something that your business could use. Then ask further questions. Um, optimistic, being optimistic, always be optimistic. They say, um, they haven't said here something about positivity. Um, yeah, you can't be positive all the time, which is true. Um, but by taking an optimistic mindset is still worthwhile. And um, it rewards people with delayed gratification or who work away at their tasks. And uh, always be the one that's, you know, is the glass half full, is the glass half empty? Well, you could always think of, and I saw this one time, and I can't remember who said it, and I can't remember who was being interviewed at the time, but I remember hearing this, and I thought, that is absolutely brilliant. You know, half glass empty glass half empty or glass half full type of person. They said, why do we have to choose? Why cannot the glass start off full? And as we're achieving our goals and our things, the glass is getting empty so that we now have room to top it up and put more goals and dreams in there. And I'm like, that is a brilliant way to look at it. Instead of, you know, the glass is half empty because we have completed these dreams and goals that we had in our glass and we now have room to fill it up. Well, the glass is half empty because we've taken out those green, you know, we've completed those, you know, same thought, we've completed it. So whether it's half empty or half full, it doesn't matter because the top half are the dreams and the goals that you have achieved and completed, and you're now creating room for more stuff to be put inside. Oh, that is brilliant. So anyway, um, if you want to, please go read the article. It's great. It's got lots of great suggestions and stuff in there. And um, go have a super fantastic sparkling winning Wednesday. Enjoy the day. I am going to go because I have list of things to do and I'm going to be celebrating at the end of the day when I get my list completed yay so it's going to be um it's going to be awesome to get that completed um but um what was I going to say oh yeah I have this key and this key is actually a bottle opener um but this is my this key um let me see if I can do this correctly um because I've had it going in my head about how I was going to introduce the key. So it's actually a bottle opener. But I'm sending this key out to people who have just celebrated their birthdays because I'm starting a, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try it because people usually send New Year's resolutions on the 1st of January. They start the 1st of January and off they go. But what if you were given a key on your birthday that was the key to open the new year of your life? And you start your New Year's resolution on the day of your, on the day of your birthday. So you take this key, you unlock the door, stepping into the next year of your life, 
and you use it to close the door behind you and complete the previous year and lock the door. This key is a master key. It can unlock all the key, all the doors in your life that you need it to unlock. There may be a few that it cannot open because it may not be the right time for that door to be opened. See, this key, this, this is a master key, but it's a very special master key because this master key can unlock any door, but some doors have time locks. So if you go to open it, you might find that it won't open yet. Like you could be waiting for a new year to start. You could be waiting for your birthday so you can start a new year. But the key is not going to unlock the door for the new year until your birthday. Think about that. What would you do with a master key? If you had a master key, what doors would you want it to open? Ooh. Huh. I'm going to go make a Facebook post now. This is this has just given me a, a great idea for a, for a Facebook post. So I'm going to go do that so we can get you to put your things on there. But if you would like to be part of my birthday club where you get to receive a key along with um, cards of encouragement throughout the year to achieve your goals that you want to achieve either on or before your next birthday, um, please private message me and we will put and I will send you the link where you can go and sign up for the um, for the birthday club where um, the key is going to play a key role in the next year of your life. I know, that was really bad, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, go have a super fantastic sparkling um, winning Wednesday and we'll catch you guys later today. Hakonera!